Hey, what's up everybody? This is Sepp and I'm pretty excited because today we launched our new template called Tempo. And today I'm also going to challenge myself working with this team to see if I actually can build a full WooCommerce shop in about half an hour. Um, I'm also going to give you a discount code at the end of the video so you can also skip all the talking and just go directly to the end where I will show you the 20% discount on this newest template. And I'm really excited because this is the biggest bundle we ever created. Um, and also uh, it includes all kinds of pages, like three custom product pages, all kinds of different home pages, the about, well, there's enough, you know, to work with. So you can create a professional looking e-commerce web shop uh, with all the uh, pages ready for you to fill in with your own content. Um, I already um, created WordPress on, on like a staging domain, as you can see, uh, I installed Flatsome as well, but this is my starting point. I, uh, there's not even WooCommerce installed. So I'm going to do everything uh, step by step. I'm also going to upload this video on our support documentation page. So once you have purchased this template, you can also watch this video to learn everything there is to know. I'm also going to use a kind of an example client. So I have like a Figma file here with another client of my shift up. I'm going to use that uh, logo and branding to replace everything from Tempo. So you also learn how to replace everything with your own branding. And um, yeah, this is the first time I also really going to experience how my template is working. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, you need to purchase the template, of course. And once you have done that, um, you will get access. Uh, so here you can go on Septilo web, purchase the template, and then you will get access to the template files uh, at the My Account section. And then you need to scroll down, find your template that you have purchased. You can also access the All Access Pass and then you will get access to all our templates. So it's a really good deal uh, that we're offering as well. Um, but once you have purchased, you, will, can, you can go to the backend and here you will find the three easy steps. Of course, we need to install Flatsome and also you need to install WooCommerce. So let's get started and do that right away because I'm going to create a WooCommerce page. So uh, a web shop. So I need to install WooCommerce. I went to plugins. I clicked on add new. Now I need to search on WooCommerce. And I won't do all the WooCommerce configuration, of course, um, but just the basic stuff so we can uh, start off. So let's install. Here we go, installed, let's activate. And then it will probably run you through the installation process. It's a bit slow, especially when you're only having a half an hour. So I won't go to all the steps. I will just uh, skip the setup for now uh, and go to the back. Uh, one thing I want to make sure is that the basic pages are installed. So yes, there are card, check out my account and the returns and the shop. Um, this is a good thing to keep in mind because uh, you will also with the uh, installation or the import of our template, you will also install uh, the shop and the account pages, but I will delete that. Make sure we don't have any duplicate WooCommerce pages. So now we have installed WooCommerce as well. So we can go to step two and we need to import the theme options. So let's do that. Let's just click on the copy and that will copy this short code. Then I need to go to my project, go to Flatsome, going to advanced, going to backup and import. And here you will see the um, theme options data. I will select it all, take it away, paste it in. I will paste my short code that I've just copied and then click on import options. So now I'm curious what we are, um, what just happened. Um, but uh, the easiest way to see that is going to the front end by clicking on visit website. And as you can see, it looks pretty good already. Uh, so we can go ahead and then uh, going to step three, import the uh, template files. So I first I need to download the XML file, going to tools, import, so now I'm going to import that XML file. I will run the importer. We'll click on choose file, find the file. 
and then I will upload file and import. I need to assign all the stuff to an existing user. For now, I will do my own user, of course. And you don't really need to say import or download the file attachments because I'm not importing any media files. And the reason why I've done this is that I won't populate or um, blow, um, how would you say, I won't upload all kinds of media files in your WordPress installation. So keep that in mind. So you, the, the template that we're selling, that we are offering, um, the, the export won't include any images. And this has to do with the fact that I want to give you a clean media library. So it doesn't really matter. So we can uncheck this, click on submit. And now all the pages should be important, as you can see. And all the uh, pages that are connected to uh, the template tempo has the name tempo in the front. And that makes it just really easy for you to recognize uh, this. And also, if you want to combine certain uh, templates from us, uh, that's easy to do. And then you can recognize, oh, this is a page for Tempo or this is a page for Adele or Snuff, etc. cetera. Um, so everything is uh, being imported now. And I will just quickly see if I don't have any extra duplicates in terms of... Um, so I already had a cart. Uh, so let's see if I'm... No, so that's a good thing. I don't see any card or an extra shop page that hasn't been uh, overrided. So that's a good thing. I'm happy for that. All right, so let's continue. Let's see how if our front page is different now. Not really. We're still showing our blocks. So first of all, we need to decide which home page we want to use. So in Tempo, we have three home pages to choose from. We have home one, two, or three. I will go for three for the moment. I think it looks really nice. So let's go to settings, reading, and let's create a, a select a static page and say we go for home three. Save changes. And now when I refresh, you can see that the home page is there. We're having this annoying dots and this has to do with the fact that we cannot import menus we need to set that up quickly and we will do that in just a moment um yeah let's do that right away so let's go to appearance menus and I also like you to show how we have set up the header so you know which menus we are using inside the uh in this specific template so when you're opening up the header settings i'm not sure if i went too quickly going to flat some um, flat some team options. And then I clicked on header and that took us to this page where I also have um, the possibility to see the header builder. And here you can see the vertical menu we're having. That's this one. Um, we're having the main menu and we're working with the top bar menu. So I'm using all the three menus that flat some has available in the header builder. Uh, but like you can see, I'm having dots, so it's not really functioning. I need to assign pages. So now I go to Appearance, Menu, Menus. And first of all, I'm going to create my vertical menu. And then, I, of course, I need to assign the location to vertical menu as well. So now it's connected. And uh, if I really want to recreate what we have on the demo, um, yeah, let's let's do that. Let's first first of all create the pages. Um, so in an ideal situation, probably. Oh. Ah. All right, my monitor monitor just uh, went down. Um, but in an ideal situation, you also want to create these categories to be your product categories as well. So first of all, I go to WooCommerce uh, products, I mean, go to categories. And then I create a category called sports. And then you can even make a subcategory. Uh, so let's say running. Let that be a subcategory for, for sports. 
Here we go. Uh, and let's do that also for sportswear. And we make a subcategory jackets. You can see that sportswear just has been added to sports as well. It should not be the case. Um, here we go. Now it works. So as you can see, I have two main categories, sports and sportswear. Running is connected to sports and jackets is connected to sportswear. Now I'll go back to menus. I still have my vertical menu open. And here I can go clicking on product categories. If you don't see this, click on screen options and make sure that the product category is checked. Now you can click on view all and now I can just add those in. Here we go. Making sure that these are subcategories from the main category. And now when I refresh, it is not working yet. Um, maybe because I still need to set up the main menu and the top bar menu. So let's do that as well. Create a new menu. Oh, the menu is not saved, the vertical menu. Let's do that again. Hmm. Not sure what is happening here, but let's maybe it's working now. Yeah, now it's working. All right. So now let's set up the main menu. Assign that as well to our main menu. Going back, and then we are having sportswear, accessories, and more info. So let's do that. Um, you could say that these are uh, product categories as well. So I could also put that in, uh, or I could just use custom links. And for now, I will just use custom links. So people cannot really click on it. Um, but we can use it for the drop down. A sportswear. And there's even a sill tag, as you can see. And that's very easy to add. What you need to do is make sure you're seeing the CSS option. And you don't see it for now. So I need to open up screen options, clicking on CSS classes. And now the CSS class is available. What I can do is just say label sill. And then I can save the menu. And I think it should work right away. As you can see, it's working nicely. There are three other ones that I think Flatsum is offering by default. You can also say label new. As you can see, and you can also, I think it was hot, label hot. Yeah. So the, these are the three that you can use as a label. Let's for now just keep it at sill. Um, we're having the drop downs, and that's also very easy to set up. What I need to do is click, and then I can set the design to um, a full width, and then select the UX block custom drop down full width, save the menu, and now it should work. The only thing is I still need to set up my vertical menu. So let's finish up the main menu. Let's also do accessories. I hate writing that word, custom link. Accessories, here we go. Uh, link, hashtag, here we go. And then I, in my demo preview, I'm also having this nice drop down design. And let's see how it's called. It's the boxed one. So let's set up boxed. Only now uh, I set the design to be a container with no a, a custom size. And then I can set it to, so for example, 700 pixels. Setting the UX block to be the boxed one. Saving the menu. And now it's working. And you can change the width, of course, to your desired 
width. Uh, and the last one, the more info. Let's do that as well. Custom link, more info. Here we go. Opening it up, setting the design to be um, a custom size again. Let's say 500 pixels. And we call this drop down stacked. Here we go. So that's done. You can even make that a little bit smaller as well. I think I overdid it a bit. All right, so that's done. Sportswear is not, yeah, it's working, but it's having problems with the vertical menu. So let's create the vertical menu as well. Sign it. Uh, sorry, not top, no, not vertical menu because we have done that already. The top bar menu, and it's not really displayed in the top bar. So you can also change the name for reference and say this is the right menu, so it's on the right side. But again, I need to assign this to my top bar menu because that that is connected to that specific element. Create the menu. Hopefully, that makes sense. Uh, let me show you quickly again. Maybe it did, but in the header builder. You can see the toolbar menu is displayed on the right side here. So that's why I'm connecting this specific menu to, um, oh, to the toolbar menu. Now I can put in a custom link. That's for now um, connected to our contact page. Here we go. Save the menu. Here we go. So now it still says tempo contact. And this is a really important step when working with our templates is that you of course need to change these page names. And the best way to do that is not to do this in the menu because you can override this of course, but you want to change the page names by going to pages, then search for example, contact, because that's one of the one, one of the pages we are now already using in our main navigation or in our uh, navigation. Clicking on the contact page. And what I want to do now is making sure, get rid of tempo and then update. And also make sure, I'm not sure, I'm not really a big fan of the Gutenberg editor. I'm not sure if you are, but I always like to really disable the it by going to plugins, add new, and then install the classic editor. I just really prefer that. Uh, activate. and then going to pages again, opening up contact. And I just wanted to make sure that the, um, um, so as you can see, it looks a little bit strange now as well, because that has to do with the fact that it was um, opening it up first in the Gutenberg editor. And now we're having this crazy piece of short codes. <laughs> and I'm not sure if it still, it still works though, but, um, Let's see. Hmm. Well, it still works. So let's open up the UX builder to see what happens. But the thing that I wanted to show you is that I also want to change my permalink, of course, not having tempo contact, but just contact. So this is an important step that you need to do for all the pages, for the pages that you want to use, of course. So let's, let's open up the UX Builder and see how all the things are working. Yeah, I wanna make sure that I'm taking this away. And this was from the WP HTML tag. So that works. Um, now it looks good again. Um, all right, so... Um, here we can also see the support page, but let's just go back and uh, we can see that we are having the menus into place. And if you're logged in into your WordPress account, you can also see that you can edit this dropdown by clicking on this little tool tab, tool tip, and then sometimes it's a little bit difficult to click on it. But once you found it, you can easily go into like a, 
uh, changing mode, like in the builder, and then you can just click on all the items that you want to uh, edit. So that's a good thing to know. And also the drop downs you can find. All the drop downs are available at the UX block section. Here you can find the drop down box, full width, and stacked. That you can also open up uh, by going to the UX blocks and change it here. But this is always a difficult way to change because you don't really see the, the, the way it's looking on the website on the front end. So, all right. One of the things that I also wanted to teach you, because maybe I will get some questions about this, is that I, in my preview, um, this is the one, and you can see that I'm having these nice icons here. So if you want to add an icon in, in your navigation, you first need to make a decision of which uh, icon library you want to use. For now, maybe I want to use Remix icon. Very simple, but also very uh, limited in a way. So my personal preference is flat icon, and I'm also having like a premium membership so I can get every SVG file that I would like. But now, maybe if you don't have it, then maybe Remix icon is a very good library to work with. Um, so let's say let's say I'm looking for sports. There's not much, but here you can see a football or a, a basketball, for example. By clicking on it, I can also change the uh, color. And like I said in the beginning, I want to you know make use of the colors that I personally like for my own branding for my own company. So I will choose to go for it with a green color. Going back to Remix icon, change the color. And then 24 pixels is quite okay. You can also go a little bit down 80 pixels and then click on copy SVG. Now I will go back to my project, going to my menu again, going to my vertical menu, because that's the place where we need to change it because this is the vertical menu. And then opening up sports, scrolling down and here at icon type, you can set it to custom content. And here you can paste in the SVG source code. So let's see if that worked. Save. Open up the website again. And here you can see it's working nicely. So let's do sportswear as well. So you now have a really good understanding how to do this. Let's do shirt. Um, put it at 80 again. Let's get the color. Here we go. Copy the SVG, going back to my menu, opening up Sportswear, setting the icon type to be custom content, pasting in the SVG, saving the menu, and now it should work. All right. So next thing up, let's replace this logo to have a nice logo of our own. Um, I have it ready here. I like to work with SVG files, uh, so I will export an SVG. The only thing is it's not supported by default um, by uh, WordPress. So I also need to install uh, quickly a um, plugin that SVGs will be supported. So let's search on SVG. Add a new plugin called SVG support. Activate it. And then go to flat zone, team options, header, logo, and site identity, because that's the place where I can replace my logo. And here at the logo image, I can now upload the SVG file. Here we go. And as you can see, it's a little bit small. So I will just increase the logo container width. Looks ready. Really nice. So I will save that and that's done. As you can see, maybe it's very difficult to see, but I'm not working with black. I'm having a kind of a navy blue color. So I will also use that color throughout my website. So first of all, I will change the top bar color, going back, clicking on top bar, setting the background color to be that navy blue. And sometimes you don't directly see it in the preview. Um, I think there's a little glitch from Flatson, but when I refresh, you can see that navy blue is matching my branding colors. Now I can also change that category. I'm not sure if that's set at the vertical menu. It is. So I just clicked simply on the vertical menu on the settings gear. Now I can change the background color. 
and now it's that navy blue as well um that's done but now I'm, I'm doing already colors so why not going inside the styling section going to colors and also make sure that our colors are uh, matching our branding so my primary primary color was already black so i wanted to make that that navy blue and the base colors so all the other colors are set to black as well so let's just change that also everything to that navy blue so maybe if your branding or your website will use like a little gray tone or just a slightly off black just replace everything so you're you're knowing that everything is matching correctly and you can play around of course with these colors um so my success color will be that green color oh here we go and i will just change all my green stuff to that turquoise uh, color so now i'm having, having also orange i will get orange in there as well changing the alert color now it all matches a little bit more in my branding identity i'm having a new bubble as well i'm not sure if i want to in introduce that red color that i have but why not um and let's put the sale price at the red color as well here we go so now the colors has been changed and now when i refresh you don't really see it but uh, as you can see the primary colors and the secondary colors are changed now um, there are some other places where you can see some colors and some checkboxes or you know and, and that's just a manual manual job to really fix um, but we're done with the header everything works we have set up the navigation items we set up the home page so now let's, because as you can see, we're not having any products displayed on our homepage. So I won't go into the depth of WooCommerce, but there's a nice import functionality to create, um, uh, I think, I thought there was like a way to, hmm. No. Demo products. There's a WooCommerce sample data. Yeah. Products, all products, import, run the importer. So there is an option. Am I missing something? Hmm. Somehow I don't have the demo uh, products. It's taking a long, long time. So here's my sample data. I will just import that. Sample products. Here we go. Run the importer. Because as you can see in our demo, we are having nice product preview, but we haven't, we didn't have that on our installation just yet. But there are now, they are displayed. So that's nice. Um, we're having products and the last thing, well, not the last thing, probably I want to show you more, but I uh, want to tell you that we have created something really great. We're now offering three product pages uh, designs where you can you know try different things and to really see which product page is the best for your company so uh, you can choose to 
decide to go forward with one product page layout and, and use that for all your products. That is the most common. And sometimes people want to do A-B testing. So you can also apply a product page template on a specific product or maybe on a category. I will show you the different options. Um, so first of all, let's go to Flatsome Team Options, WooCommerce, and then the product page. And here you can see that the custom product layout is set to product page one. You can also set it to two or three, and that's the default page for all your products. So that's a good thing to know. So you can change that. Uh, if you wanna, for example, change a product page for a specific product, that's easy. Just go to one of your products, make sure you go to edit product. That's a way you can also, of course, go to products and then click on one of your products here. And then scroll down and make sure you see the product data tab. Clicking on advanced, no, it is product layout. And here you can send a custom product layout. So here you can choose for that specific product, a different product page layout. So now I will update. And now this only this product has the product page two template uh, available. And now if you wanna set a specific product page on a category, like a product category, you go to the category sections, Choose, for example, accessories. And here you can also say, okay, I want all my products that are connected to the category accessories to a match product page two or three. Comes in very handy. Um, yeah, I don't have the product categories available, but you, you catch my drift. Um, so that's all I had to say about the product pages. Um, yeah, you can also integrate the wish list. At the moment, we also have that um, available on our uh, demo, as you can see. Here you can see the wish list icon. So what you need to do is um, go to the plugins, click on Add New, search on wish list, and from the beginning, Flatsome is working with the Yit wish list. Um, there are a lot of plugins that are offering the same, but uh, this is working and it's nicely integrated with Flatsome directly. So I installed, I activate, and it's very easy because probably it's already added to the header builder. So when I refresh now, you will see the heart icon available. You can of course drag that around, change the loca location, but I will just show you where it is in the header builder. Here you can find the wish list now available. All right. Um, so that's working. Products are nicely displayed on the homepage. Well, as you can see, we're not having any, uh, well, we have blocks, but we are missing the featured images. So that's the only thing blocks, blog posts ha have been imported, but the featured images are missing. So that's a very easy thing. And uh, let's first, um, get an image. I'm taking all my images from Unsplash. A lot of them are free relative free to use so let's get a swimming let's download a small size just to speed up things and i'm having my post here scrolling down here at the featured image section i will set my featured image i will upload my um my just image that i just downloaded set the featured image and now when i will visit my homepage, you can see that the image is nicely displayed. So we are having like a nice post layout, like a blog post layout, you know, having some images, some nice squeeze text, some uh, testimonial call out, some bullets. And we have created a preset for you that you can also always work with that. I will show you quickly by going to WordPress going to post, I'm going to add a new post, call this test post. Here we go. And I can just publish. You can also assign it to a category, of course, publish. Open up the UX builder. And then here by clicking on add elements, searching on section, you can see the blog post layout will be available for you. Clicking on it and there you have your nice blog post. We like to keep it very minimal and you can see at the big websites like Medium, 
they are having this minimalized layout as well. We think really works. Um, so that's that about the post. Last thing, our shop page. We're not having a direct shop page at the moment. So um, yeah, let's add that to the menu. Makes it much easier. Menus and let's say going to our page list, shop page. And I will call this shop all categories. All categories. Save. So now I'm able to go to all categories as well. And here you have, um, well, not all categories. Actually, I'm going directly to all the products because I've set that up. If you first want to have your shop, when you go to the shop page uh, that your categories are displayed, you need to go to flat some team options, go into product catalog, catalog, and then you need to say that the product page are not showing the products, but they're first showing the categories, and then it's displayed. Your categories are displayed, but for now I will just show the products. Makes more sense. All right. Uh, I wanted to quickly show you how to set up the sidebar as well, the same as we have in our demo. Let's see if I still have it available. Let's go to shop. Um, here we are. Uh, so we're having a search, we're having a price filter, and we're having a category uh section here on the sidebar uh we need to go to wordpress to do this maybe you know this already but going to appearance two widgets then like i said we're we do want to have a search there's a lot here so shop sidebar i was just dragging it to it um shop sidebar uh what else uh we had a search we had a Price filter, filter product by price. And we're adding the product categories. Here we go. So now when I refresh, it's nicely displayed and it's already styled for you. So that's done. The product product page is done. And uh, if for any reason you want to change this layout, you need to uh, either go to flat some team options, WooCommerce catalog, but there's also a nice customized page, uh, direct link that take you to the product catalog settings. Oh man, it's really working. I love still working with this team. I'm happy everything works out. Uh, but here at the product catalog settings, you can uh, change the layout as well, uh, saying you don't want to have a sidebar, for example. You can see all the products directly without the uh, sidebar. Um, you can also change the... Um, we have probably set it already to equal image heights and to be it hundred so that means that everything is a nice and square but you can also uh, you know change this around and make this for example 70 percent but gives you more like a like a postcard size uh, but in most cases we're just using square images and by doing this even when you're uploading a bigger image it will be still be a perfect square so that's a good thing to know um, you can also change the products rows to be for example to be four four in a row on desktop uh, on tablets, maybe you want to have three. On mobile, you maybe want to have one. So this is a good way to uh, manage your responsiveness. Um, so that's done. It's published. Let's just quickly take it back to three. Done. I think I covered all the important stuff. Yeah, I think I did. Um, a lot of uh, things, for example, here, I still need to set up my uh, blog page. So let's do that. Tools, reading. Going to, I set up my homepage, uh, but I haven't set the blog page. And as you can see, it's still saying tempo home three, tempo blog. And I want to change that because now I'm really using it. So I, I search on blog, opening it up changing the page name, but making sure equal is important to change the permalink. And that also counts for the homepage that I'm already using. So going to searching on home, 
I'm using the homepage one, I think. No, it was three, as you can see, the front page. And this is my new homepage. You don't see the permalink uh, because it's already, you know, the this is the structure already. It's the so now the tempo block is not working, but probably now when I click on journal, I need to probably change the uh, the link. Because it was tempo block, of course, but if I want to change that journal, it just needs to be block. And this is not really including a link. It is, but you need to go into the icon box. So that's a good thing to know. Changing that. And you don't need to have the tempo um, in front of it. Yeah. Voila. Let's see if it works. There we go. So now it's working nicely, redirecting it to uh, to the blog section. All right, so um, I think I covered everything, um, all the important stuff. We have a full workable uh, Flatsome WooCommerce shop. So um, I'm going to upload this. Um, oh, yeah, I wanted to show you the discount that I have ready here for you. So I created 20% 20, 20 discount deal. Use the code Tempo Deal. So this is the one, and it will give you a 20% discount on this newest uh, template that we have launched uh, to work with. So let me know what you think in the comments. I'm very excited to launch this and hopefully you can create a nice new website and a, and a great e-commerce business with it. So thank you for watching and I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.